good evening, or it could very well be good afternoon. I'm not sure what moment you'll be watching this video, but whatever moment you're in, I'm wishing you love, joy, and most importantly, success and peace. My name is Chantel Lucas. I am the CEO and founder of Sparkle Nation LLC, and I am here to give you five signs that God is trying to get your attention. All right, here we go. I'm going to jump right into it. God sometimes wants to get our attention. Um, you may be going the wrong way, and he wants you to steer you in another direction, the direction of his will. Right now, I want to steer you in the direction of hitting that subscribe button right here. <laughs> so please, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe right now by hitting that bell. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, moving right along. The first reason um, or sign that God is trying to get our attention is your friends. They confront you. They say, hey, look, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. I don't think you're in the word like you need to be in the word. I don't think that you're praying like you should be discerning friends, friends that pray for you, friends that can pick you up in the spirit. OK, sometimes it gets on our nerves or I don't know about you, but I have friends that will tell me the truth. Uh -uh, Chantel, you don't need to do that. Uh -uh, Chantel, I think you better go back and pray about it again. So the word of God says, Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Listen, sometimes our friends wound us, but it's good for us. All right. So that's how we know that God is trying to get our attention. He uses the people that's close to us to help steer us in the right direction. And that Bible verse came from Proverbs 27 and 6. All right. So the second sign the word of God convicts you um, I don't know if some of you go to church or you don't go to church you read your word um, you read your Bible some verses stick out to you you could have been thinking about um, or experiencing something in your life that you've been trying to make a decision and your pastor speaks right to you he prophesies over your life in that very moment the word speaks to you um, whether it be your pastor or whether it be a person in passing or it could be you reading the word for yourself and a verse is illuminated and it touches your life it changes your life it gives you direction and um, the word of God says um, the word of God is a living and active sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of, of soul and spirit, of the joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That is Hebrews 4 and 12. All of that. All of that. The word of God is there for our direction. It is the instruction for our lives. Okay, it is our manual. All right, so we're moving around along. Okay, so the third reason uh, or reason or sign that God could be, you know, trying to get your attention is a financial storm. Has anybody ever been through a financial storm? OMG, those are the words. Let me tell you, there's nothing sunny when your money is funny. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Nothing feels good. Okay? So sometimes God has to use those things to draw you to your knees so you can get back to praying. Okay? Because when you had all that stuff, you didn't pray. When you had all those things and financial blessings, you drifted away some. OK, so maybe he's using this transition or storm to bring you to your knees in closer relationship with him. OK, um, God is using a financial difficulty to get your attention. All right. Have you been given to others? Um, have you been uh, even given of yourself, not even money, but your time, your service? to uh, anyone. God is trying to get you back to those things. All right. 
Number four, sometimes you may have a lack of peace. Worry, just an agitated spirit. When you don't have peace about something, it may be God telling you, no, you need to wait. I could take myself, for example. Um, let, when I'm dating someone or I'm in a relationship with someone and I ask God, God, you know, is this the one? You know, we ask and we don't have a peace about that. We don't have a peace about it because they are not for us. Whether it be a relationship, whether it be a friendship, whether it be a decision that you need to make for your life, if you do not have peace, then God is instructing you to wait. God is peace. He, that peace will come over you. So it may be a sign that God is trying to get your attention. I need you to wait a little while on that decision. I need you to wait a minute before you take that step because it might be the wrong direction. Okay. All right. The last sign that God is trying to get your attention is a Damascus experience. Um, if you guys read in the Bible about the road to Damascus, uh, Saul was on the road to Damascus and he was blinded for three days. When you're blind, you can't see. And you have to depend on other people, right, to help you through. The road to Damascus was a humbling experience for Saul. It humbled him because he had to rely on someone else's help. Has anybody ever been there? Has anybody ha ever had a road to Damascus experience? Oh my gosh, I've had several, several. <laughs> I remember being hospitalized. I couldn't bathe myself. I had to depend on my family members to help me walk, to help me, um, even speak to other people because it, well, at one time I couldn't even speak. So that is a humbling, God will use humbling experiences to draw you back to him, to draw your purpose out of you. Then Saul was um, eventually named Paul, and you guys know the story um, behind that. So sometimes he'll use an encounter to humble you so you can rely on others. Um, it could be an accident. It could be an illness. It could be jail. It could be prison. It could be a huge transitional moment in your life that is destined to change your life for the better. If you lean and depend on God the way you're supposed to in your Damascus experience. Um, that was five, but I'm going to throw in a bonus. Death can change your life. Death of a loved one. Um, it can really make you see if you don't live purposely, and if you don't live in the will of God, you won't be able to see your family member again if they're going to heaven or in, in the next life. OK, it's and not only that, it's a life changing experience. It it really hones in on your demo and on your emotions. Excuse me. It gives you a do or die moment. What are you going to do when the very thing that you love the most is gone? Whether it be your mom, your father, your family member, what will you do? Will you shoot or will you pass? Will you embody that pain and turn it into purpose? Will you live out the rest of your life in purpose or will you die in the death of that loved one? So sometimes God uses death to shape us to uh, into the person that he has called us to be. And not only death, sometimes... Um, God can get get us um, our attention um, for a divine appointment. You know, you ever been in a, a specific place at a specific time? Um, well, you don't even know why God told you to go somewhere. God has told me to go different places. And I'm like, God, why are you telling me to go here? Why? And he doesn't answer, but he tells me to go. And when I get there, when I get there, 
It is so obvious what he's trying to do. It's a reason for everything. I'll give you an example. I was taking a bucket load of shoes and I wear a size nine and I was taking it to the dumpster okay to throw him away and God said don't throw it away don't throw them away and I'm like God well I need to get this stuff out of my house this was maybe like a year or two ago and it wasn't even four hours later maybe even that someone inboxed me on my organization's page on social media and she said I don't have any shoes um, I don't have any clothes. I said, what size you wear? She said, I wear nine. I had a bucket full of size nine shoes for that young lady, and I delivered them to her. God will get your attention if you're able to listen. All you have to do is listen. Keep your heart and your mind open. And how do you do that? Through prayer. Through prayer and his word. All right. So that is it. I'm excited. I hope this blessed you because it blessed me all over again. <laughs> and remember to live your life. Don't forget to enjoy your life and don't forget to bring life to those that may be down. OK, guys, sparkle bright. Bye bye.